Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at using my SDR Play RSP1A to receive aircraft tracking signals using the Dump 1090 program and virtual radar server. You can also find some other videos I've made outlining the operation and setup of the RSP1 and RSP1A on my channel. I'll leave links to those in the description as well. Here's a quick look at how I have the RSP1A connected. So I've got the RSP1A connected to the computer with a standard USB cable. The computer is located down under the desk here. And I've connected to an antenna using this SMA to SO239 adapter. So then the coax just goes outside to an antenna that's mounted above my garage. The, the antenna I'm using is actually a two meter ham radio base station antenna. It's mounted up about eh, 15 or 20 feet or so on my garage and uh, it seems to work okay for this application. Now that everything is all installed, let's start up Dump 1090. So what I'm going to do is go to my Windows Start menu. I'm going to scroll down and look for the SDR Play menu folder. And down here we've got some Start Dump 1090 uh, choices here. We've got a 2 megahertz mode and we've got an 8 megahertz mode. If you have an older computer with less memory and horsepower, you may want to try the 2 megahertz mode and in particular the non-interactive mode, this one. But since I've already tested this, I know that the 8 megahertz interactive mode works okay with this computer even though it's a few years old. This is a AMD Athlon quad core. I don't remember the exact processor on it, but I have 8 gig of memory, so it seemed to work okay. So now as you can see, Dump 1090 is up and you can see some things happening. This is actually receiving data from the RSP unit already. So now in order to use this data and plot it, we're going to open up Virtual Radar Server. So once again, I'm going to go to my Start menu and this time I'm just going to search for Virtual Radar Server. And here's the app, so I'll click on that to start it. So if this is the first time that you're doing this, you're going to need to go under the tools and go to the options to set up a connection to your receiver. So you can see under the options page here, there is a section for receivers. And you can see I've got the RSP1A defined. You can define multiple receivers here. So I'll click on the RSP1A so you can see what the settings are. So you can give it any name you want. In fact, I'll fix this one while we're here. The next step is to change the format to the AVR Beast raw feed. So the rest of these settings I'm going to leave at default except for the port setting. I think when I first installed this, this was at 30003, so I just bumped it up to 5. And everything else down here is going to stay at the default settings. Now once you've got that all done, you can do test connection. And you can see that I've got the message that says a connection can be made with these settings. So I should be good to go. So now I'm going to say OK to that. We're back now at the Virtual Radar Server main page. And because I made a change to this, I'm going to reconnect to the data feed. Because I made a change to my receiver, I needed to restart Virtual Radar Server. So you can see there's my RSP1A. It's connected. And you can see that it's receiving messages and tracking aircraft. So now that that's all taken care of, what we want to do now is click on this link right here to be able to start to see the aircraft that we're tracking on the map. You can see right now I'm tracking 12 aircraft, so let's see if we can see them. The first time that this opens up, it centers itself on Heathrow Airport in London. So unless you're in that area, what you're going to want to do is scroll out and slide your map over to wherever it is you might be. Now in my case, I'm here in northeastern Connecticut. So we're going to kind of center the map here. I'm kind of up in this area. So we'll leave the map centered there and see what we can see. So you can see right now there's two aircraft on the screen, a small one and a bigger one. 
So you can see the call sign of each aircraft is listed below it, as well as the tail number, and I believe that's the elevation. And you can also see there's one way down here that's creeped into the picture as well. So you can see that clicking on a particular entry here highlights the aircraft yellow and then just shows some detail about it. You can see it pulls up a picture of at least the airplane type. I don't know if this is that exact tail number, but this is this is at least the same plane type that we're looking at right now. And if it's transmitting it, you can see information about the plane's route here. So you can see it took off from JFK in New York and it's on its way to Heathrow. It's got some heavy wake turbulence. And then up here you can see its altitude, vertical speed, uh, or presumably horizontal speed, heading, its distance, squawk, its engines, twin jet, its species, and then the tail number is up here, American Airlines, and here's the type of aircraft that it is. Okay. You can see up here in the left corner, there are some options that you can choose from. Just like a Google map, you can change this between map and satellite and things like that. I'm going to leave it on map. So next to that, there is a menu button with some other options that we can choose from. So we can choose language, we can add shortcuts, we can play with the audio. You can actually turn the audio on so that it will announce a new airplane once it's um, come into view. So here we can change some things with the layout. Okay, that moves things around. I'm going to go back to the classic layout. I like that the best. Let's see, we can get some reports on uh, things that we've received and so, so on and so forth. So you can see under options, there are a ton of options that you can change that control how things are displayed, units, locations, and then audio. This is how you turn on whether or not the announcement of a new aircraft is made through your speakers. So I haven't played with all of these options and things yet, but I'll go through and see kind of what's here and what's not. I'll let you guys do that on your own as well. For just basic casual monitoring, the classic layout with sort of the default options seems to work fine for me. So I'm just going to click on one of these. Registration November 7th, 0 Kilo Charlie. Type MU2. Operated by N70KC LLC. Call sign Delta Charlie Mike 4133. Route not known. Okay, so you can hear that uh, with the audio turned on there in the options, it announces what the plane is and everything when you click on it. I think it'll also automatically announce a new one when it arrives on the scene as well. So if that's something you like, you can turn that on. If you find that annoying, you can turn it off. So I think this is where I'm going to leave things for today. As you can see, we're up and running and doing some casual plane watching, so to speak, with the SDR Play RSP-1A, the Dump 1090 application, and Virtual Radar Server. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching. That's pretty much, oh man, you can see that this end is connected to the computer through a USB cable. Get out of here. Get out of here, cat.